Good evening, family. Welcome to our great celebration as we meet together at the throne of God. And we're going to be praying for one another. We're going to learn more from our Father and about him, about Jesus, our Savior, how he died to save us. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit who draws us into the presence of God and anoints us and gives us power. It's going to be a wonderful night. And we're going to pray that God will be there with you. Make your place a sanctuary. Turn everything off, your cell phones. <clears throat> Have everybody sit down, and let's make it holy. Let's invite Jesus. Do you need his presence tonight? Well, you want some respect, so let's welcome him. Father, we thank you for the privilege of serving you and loving you. Thank you, Lord, for the honor of being your children. And Father, we thank you that you invite us around your table to feed us spiritual food tonight. So Lord, make our places holy. Make our hearts holy. And we look, Lord, we're thirsty and hungry for more of you. And so we give our thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's healing night, but it's also a very special night. Do you remember the testimony I gave you of this kind of man, man that his family kind of thinks he's a little bit crazy? Well, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that was like about two days ago, and he hasn't been able to sleep yet. He lives on the mainland. But a lot of you know him or know of him. And uh, his name, we'll call him David. And uh, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit on his birthday. So what do we do on birthdays? We sing happy birthday. And then our dear friend David, we're going to sing a Holy Ghost song and dedicate it just for you. We're going to sing it about three times, the Holy Ghost song, so you can learn it, okay? So let's sing happy birthday to David. Everybody, wherever you are, stand, because I think if you knew who he was, you would honor him. He's been a great friend to us. So let's sing happy birthday to David. Happy birthday to you, David. Happy birthday to you, David. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. We love you, we do. We love you, we do. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. The Holy Ghost and fire and it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive and it's all over me and it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive and it's all over me and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. And it's all over me, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Keeping me alive, and it's all over me, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. And it's all over me, and it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive, and it's all over me, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Amen. And that's only for you, David, to share with your friends as you share Jesus. And happy birthday. And happy birthday for being born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Now you can go to sleep. I think he's been up for three days. Remember, he's the one that, oh, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost when I told him, when he said he couldn't sleep because we had witnessed so many miracles. I said, go to the bathroom and start praising God. And then pretty soon, he got slain in the spirit. His wife started speaking in a Jewish prayer or something. They started dancing, making so much noise. The two kids woke up. And he ran down and got the kitchen oil, cooking oil, and blessed it and anointed the kids. And they got filled with the Holy Ghost and started speaking. And, you know, the last count was with them, aunties and uncles and cousins and their kids, 19 of them in the last few day, uh, days getting baptized in the Spirit. Some of them just saved and baptized right then. After he leads them to Christ, he just anoints them and they start speaking in tongues. That is what Pentecost really is. And I told them because sometimes people get so filled with God and they are new and they don't know that it's in the Bible, but it's in the second chapter of Acts. And if you want it, read it and say, Jesus, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, to me, the Holy Spirit is like fuel. If you're, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you probably are like one of those dead branches that the Father might just come out and cut off because you're not fruitful. Oh, but when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you draw life from Jesus who is a branch and you're very fruitful. Well, I think we need to start by singing our favorite song, Every Praise. So let's sing that to the Lord. Every praise belongs to Jesus. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. 
Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap offering wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, it's good to be together with the family, knowing that our Father is watching us and listening. Oh, Jesus is being glorified. The Holy Spirit is just drawing us together. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I've got an announcement while you're looking for Isaiah chapter 61. Franklin Graham and other spiritual leaders across the land have been contacting us, churches, to have us declare this Sunday as a day of fasting and prayer. How many of you know that our country needs prayer? The enemy has things plotted against us. They want us to have a civil war. They're funding groups to fight each other, burn our cities, and work against our law and order. They've done it for years. But it's come kind of head on that will be determined in this very important election, the direction of our country. And we need to pray. Because if we don't vote in godly people, If the godless should get in, our freedom of religion will not be long with us. We have studied the things that have gone in other nations that have gone towards socialism. And as soon as they come in, the churches get closed. The pastors will get imprisoned, persecuted. And so we need to pray. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be dedicating this Sunday as churches across the land to declare it a day of fasting and praying and beseeching God. You can do the fast any way you want. You can start from Saturday night and end it on Sunday night. Uh, Start it on Sunday morning and end it on Monday morning. You can do a water fast and just... Drinking water, if you fast, you need to drink a lot of water. Don't go without water. But some of you might have to eat food for your medic- with your medication. We're not under the legalistic law of fasting. But let's set our hearts to look to the Lord. Let's feast on God's word. In fact, there's no sense of going without food if you're not going to spend that time eating spiritual food. And so get into the word and study the word, claim the promises of God. And for this Sunday, we're going to try to resurrect our I Love America choir. So those of you who've been in it or those of you who haven't but want to be in it and you think, well, I cannot sing very well. This Friday night, because we're not having our Facebook youth service, we're going to have instead our uh, rehearsals for our talent show. And if I'm not mistaken, I, saw, I thought I saw Mother Teresa running around here. Maybe she's going to show up at part of the service and let us know that um, she has a talent. And so anyway, we want to remind all you families and individuals who want to participate to come on Friday night, and we're going to have a dress rehearsal on Friday night for the talent show the following Friday night. So no Facebook. Wherever you are, you can practice. But let us know if you want to be on the program so we know how to run the program. But this Friday night, the, the other people with the, the talents will start coming in at 6 o'clock to do their dress rehearsal. But at 7 o'clock, we're going to take a break. And from 7 till about 8 o'clock, we're going to uh, learn two very simple I Love America songs, and one of them I really want, I don't know if we can get it up together, but it's called America, It's Time to Pray. 
And we're going to sing it on Sunday morning. So we would like for you to come and join us and just be here. We need your face as well as your voice. But even if you don't have a good voice, just stand behind J James and they're going to think you're singing really good. Okay, but I think it'll be fun too. But we need to really pray for our nation. Not only on Sunday, but do it from now to the election. We need to really pray. Pray for protection for the candidates that are running because there are heated groups on either side. And we want us to behave like Americans. And so let's pray. In fact, let's pray right now for our president, his family, and Joe Biden and his family. And we pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There are many prophecies saying that if we Christians will pray, God will show favor to us. So, Father, we thank you. You said you set up kings, and you have their hearts in the palm of your hand, and you can turn it any way you want to. And what you're saying is that you're ultimately in control. But we Americans right now are praying for your mercy on our country. The enemy has tried to start riots and dissension and division. And we need to be alert, Lord. Guide voters to vote for their candidate that is righteous. And I pray we will put in people in office who are pro-life. How can we call ourselves a civilized nation if we kill unborn babies? Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on those who think they don't need to vote. Oh, yes, we do. It is our obligation to help us to rise up and do our civic duty as a spiritual duty unto you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been having bulletins saying that it would be safer. Hawaii, we have the mail-in vote. But because there are all kinds of things that can happen at the Velma Santos uh, Civic Center here up the road, is where the election central is. If you, it started opening already, so we would suggest that you vote and you take your vote personally there. And if you voted early and decided to change your mind, then you can go there and get another ballot and and you know fix it with them. But it's important that every Christian get out there to vote. It is so very important this election. Well, in the sixty-one first chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the great, we call them the major prophets. Not necessarily because uh, they were more important than the other, which we call the minor prophets. Uh, it's because their books were lengthier. They wrote more. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, and so uh, Ezekiel. The others wrote really small letters like books, but they're called minor prophets, but their prophecies are very important too. These prophetic books are so important to verify that Jesus was not just an ordinary man, just happened to come, happened to have charisma, happened to have knowledge and, and that was superior to his peers. No, no, no. These prophecies point to God's promise of a coming Messiah, a Redeemer, a Savior. And so there are prophecies in these books that Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, this God in the flesh who had come, actually fulfill. And he has fulfilled all of these. And so when we talked about John the Baptist in our baptismal Sunday, when he says, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. He was announcing that this is the one that had been prophesied by Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Micah, and others in the Old Testament. But in this Isaiah uh, book, I like this. In fact, it's a miniature Bible. You know, the um, Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we have 27 books in the New Testament. 
So those of you who are good mathematicians know that there needs to be how many books in the Old Testament then? If there is a total of 66 books, 27 are in the New Testament, starting with the birth of Jesus, how many books are left over to be in the Old Testament? 39. James gets the prize. The real reason why I asked you because I kind of forgot. But 39 books, okay, in the Old Testament. Then Jesus came and we have 27 books of the New Testament, New Covenant. The New Covenant was under, sealed under the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is very important. We're going to be talking more about the blood of Jesus, about blood of Jesus' power. One of the most powerful songs you can learn and sing is, There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus is the lamb. In the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were delivered by Moses and God sent them to appeal to Pharaoh to let the slaves who were the Jews in Egypt for about 400 years go, Pharaoh was very stubborn. But then the 10th plague was that if the household did not have the blood of an unblemished lamb, the death angel would come and the firstborn would die. But if they had killed an unblemished lamb and put the blood on the doorpost of their house, the death angel came and would pass over that house and the firstborn would not die. Because you see, the firstborn of God the Father, Jesus Christ, was going to die for us. And so the Jewish people have the Passover feast. They celebrate all through these ages. They celebrate the Passover feast where their firstborn were not killed and they were eventually delivered. And so we believe that the new covenant is the blood of Jesus, not the blood of the lambs and the bullocks and so forth, as Hebrews says, but the precious blood of Jesus. You were not bought by silver and gold. You know, in the days of slavery in our country, you can go to the slave block and buy a slave. Unfortunately, they were selling human beings. But when I was living in the South, there was something very interesting. I went to Fayetteville, North Carolina. I was going to school in nearby Greenville, North Carolina. And uh, I learned that at the slave block where they were trading slaves, trading people and buying, plantation owners would come and buy, you know, the slaves and sometimes separate husband and wife and children and they're crying and screaming, but they bought the ones they want and they didn't care and they just went on. That was part of their mentality and life. But you know, and you study that history very well, I'll tell you the good news. There are some true Christian plantation owners, and they would go to the selling market to buy whole families so the families didn't have to be separated. You know, we don't hear good stories a lot. They like to tell the bad stories, and there were so many bad stories for sure. But there were some who had been saved by the blood of Jesus. And they were set free from their slavery of sin. And because of their allegiance to Jesus, they saw the humanity of their black brothers and sisters. And they risked their reputation and life to go and buy whole families to keep them together. Well, Isaiah is a prophet that points to Jesus so spectacularly, many prophecies in his book. But in the 61st chapter, and the reason why we said the prophecies are important is because they all point to one person, and there's only one person that fulfilled all of these prophetic statements, and that was Jesus. Just think, you know, four or five hundred years, three, four hundred years before Jesus came, these things started lining up. And I want all of us to listen to what the Savior was going to do. 
This is the prophecy. Isaiah 61, beginning with the first verse. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, for crying, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Remember we studied that we are the planting of God. We are the branches that are linked to the vine, the stump, Jesus Christ, our vine. We are linked branches to bear fruit. But as I was reading that, did one of the descriptions fit your need think about it I think he covered it all Jesus came to forgive us of all our sins to cleanse us from all our iniquities remember my favorite one found in Isaiah also 53 5 I think you need to memorize that Jesus was wounded Isaiah says again This was hundreds of years before Jesus even came. But he described how Jesus was going to be treated and rejected and crucified. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes. Have you ever seen the passion of the Christ? It's hard to see Jesus beaten like that, but they said it was even worse by those stripes. We were healed, St. Peter says in the New Testament. Jesus paid it all for you and me. So here is the prophecy. And so turn over to the New Testament because I want us to look at Luke chapter 4, when Jesus went into the synagogue, every town with 50 families would be required like to have a synagogue. It was like a um, community center, and the scriptures would be read, and celebrations would be um, celebrated there as a community And then, of course, three times a year from that community, everybody was required to go to Jerusalem to the temple for the bigger feast, three big feasts during the year. But here Jesus was, and he had opened to this passage we had just read, and he came to his hometown, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And in the 16th verse, it says, as is his custom as his custom was he went to the synagogue on the sabbath day people say you don't need the church i can worship god anywhere well jesus could have worshiped god anywhere he was god but he set an example he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day as his custom was and stood up to read and he was handed the book of Isaiah and see what he reads because it is the reading that we just read 
in a little short, shortened version. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. As we read this, you know, they said, he closed the book, it says he gave it back to the attendant, and all of the eyes of people there were on him, and he began to say, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Can you imagine this prophecy they had looked for, their grandparents and great-grandparents had looked for it for generations, and they're sitting there in Nazareth and hearing the fulfillment of that and seeing the very one who fulfilled that. It must have been awesome. Let me say this. For those of you in our generation who were lost in sin, Maybe you had your own religion but did not know Jesus. You were not born again. And somehow God through his Holy Spirit came looking for you. God's Spirit came looking for all of us. Most of us either were running from him or we were blaspheming him or we were ignorant of him. But if you're listening tonight, most of you have come to meet that Jesus. Maybe you were not there in that synagogue that day, but Jesus is here. In fact, when you renounced your sins, he said, through my spirit, I will come into your heart. I will abide in you, and my words will abide in you. We can have an intimate fellowship with Jesus. We are even more blessed than the people who were there that day because in our generation, God has chosen to abide in us, to make our bodies his temple, he says. And so we need to keep it holy. And if there's some of you who still have not surrendered to the Lord, maybe you've been listening a while and you're a little bit curious, I want you to know, that God knows the status of your heart. And you're not listening to this by accident. Somebody invited you or the Holy Spirit drew you. Maybe by accident you tuned us in, but I know it's not by accident. Jesus is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And that is the greatest healing. When we talk about a healing service, let me tell you, we can have joy and peace even in the midst of physical pain and suffering if we have Jesus in us. He is enough. And so if you'd like to join our family, just say this little prayer that we did. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me just as I am. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I did not know that somebody had to pay for my sins, and you did. Please forgive me of all my sins. I invite you to come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I've made a mess out of my life. I don't know who to turn to. I've tried everything and nothing works. But I invite you, Lord, if you can take me and do something with me, I give myself to you. Write my name in your Lamb's Book of Life. Give me abundant life here and eternal life after I die. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I pray that the burden of sin will be lifted, that the miracle of new birth will happen to anyone who sincerely said that prayer. 
that you will come in through your Holy Spirit. You will make your abode there. You will guide, you will teach, you will comfort, you will heal, you will set free, even as the prophet Isaiah said you would. You will open blind eyes. You will set the captives free, some. Oh, in the spirit, I see some of you so imprisoned by your bad habits, especially drugs and alcohol. You've tried to stop, but you couldn't. You've invited Jesus to come in. Give it to Jesus every time you're tempted with any of your temptations. Because Satan would like to get us back, and he would linger if we let him. Rebuke him in Jesus' name and say, get out of my life, Satan. I belong to Jesus. My sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. I have been set free. And ask Jesus tonight if you haven't been free. Jesus, set me free. Cleanse my body, cleanse my mind, cleanse my soul, my spirit. I receive that cleansing that you purchased on the cross, and I give you my thanks. I give you my thanks. Let's worship the Lord and sing, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Is Jesus your provider? I don't care what you need. Look, we read all of the things Jesus came to fulfill. I'm sure, I'm sure he meets your need by what he promised. So, Let's sing Jehovah Jireh, my provider, and worship him tonight. Okay, if you want to stand and stretch and dance, just do it. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory, he will give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh, care it for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, care it for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He will give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh, care it for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, care it for me. He is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, the balm of Gilead, the rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that He let thee. He is the great I am, the God of Abraham. Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace I am, the God of Israel, the everlasting one. He is Jehovah, the God that He let thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that He let thee. He's your provider, Jehovah Jireh, God of salvation, God of Messiah. The Son He sent to you and testified of Him. He is Jehovah, the God that He let thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that He let thee. He is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. The balm of Gilead, the rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that he let thee. He 
is the great I am, the God of Abraham, Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace I am, the God of Israel, the everlasting one, he is Jehovah, the God that he with thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. He's your provider, Jehovah Jireh, God of salvation, God of Messiah. The Son he sent to you and testified of him. He is Jehovah, the God that he with thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that he let thee. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. His report says victory. Story. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. His report says victory. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the you can hear all kinds of reports. I pray that as you get into God's word, that you're going to make it a habit to listen to the report of the Lord. I know that whenever we turn to God's word, it's never a bad report. I don't care how down you are, how sick you are, how sad you are. The Bible says of itself that God's word is alive and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. And you know, I've learned myself that it is an alive book. Sometimes, you know, I've studied this book, but sometimes I just have a problem or I have a situation and I just need encouragement or a promise from the Lord. And I forget where to look, and I would open the Bible, and a scripture will jump out at me. We call it the rhema word. This logos word that is written down in, in, in a book all of a sudden jumps up with the Holy Ghost life. You're going to find this. If you make yourself a friend of the word of God, if you mark your Bible and study it and love it like a love letter from Jesus, when you have a need, when you open that alive word, the word that means so much to you, you've experienced some of the promises already. When you're down and out, and maybe the doctor gave you a very bad and dismal report, just open the word of God. And you've got a choice, like we sang. You've got a choice to believe the report of the Lord or the report of the doctor or somebody else that wants to give bad news. And so we celebrate the fact that the choices that we have through Jesus Christ always gives life. If there's a spirit of death around you, 
spirit of death in your home. You know, there's some people that are always talking bad news. They like to deliver bad news. They like to say bad things about people. They like to tell you that the plumbing is leaking. Or they want to tell you that the tire is flat. You know, they're the first ones to report that. But let me tell you what. We can live in victory. We can live in victory so that God will help us to think. The Bible says whatsoever things are lovely and good and true and honest and are of a good report, in Philippians it says. Think on those things. Let me say this. You are what you think. You are what you think. Every action that you take starts from here, from what you think. And so over and over you will hear me say, renew your mind. When we were born, when we were conceived, when we were in our mother's womb, the beginning of our life, God gave us the development of our five senses. And all through life, with or without Christ, that is feeding information. These five things are feeding information to our brain. And now that we are born again, it's hard to forget some of the things we have learned. Some of you, not those that are here tonight, I hope. I haven't heard them. I've heard others. It took you a while to change your language. All oh, those bad words would slip out. And you would cover your mouth because I was present. You know? It's your brain was programmed. So when something bad happens, a bad word came out. So that brain has to be washed by the blood of God, of Jesus. But it also needs to then be filled. Because let me say this to you as a, as a pastor. If there's any spiritual vacuum around you, Satan is going to come and fill it. If there's any vacancy in your life, your time, your talent, whatever, if you don't surrender and use it for the Lord, Satan's going to use it. Or he'll put it on the shelf so he can't bless anybody. And so we need to change the way we think. If you say, I've had a habit that I haven't been able to get rid of, well, try not to think about it and try not to do it and Pat Robertson always says, you do it for 21 days straight, and it becomes a habit. So I believe you can forget what you're thinking about that's not good by replacing that. You cannot just forget it. You've got to replace death with life. And so you need to get a scripture that will help you to rebuke that part of you that is bringing death to you and put a scripture there and retrain your brain. I have so many people, I'm encouraging them to memorize scriptures. And I remember in one of the good things about going to seminary, although people kind of make fun of us who went to seminary, they said, you went to a cemetery, you know, and they make jokes about it. But one of the good things about it is in our classes, most of the classes required us to memorize scriptures, letter perfect, punctuation perfect, and usually, at least three scriptures a week for a particular class. So by the time we finish in three years or so, we know a lot of scriptures. Because not only it's for us to quote that and, you know, and make us look smart, but actually it was reprogramming our mind, our brain, to think the thoughts of God, a brain that was so used to thinking the thoughts of the world. And so take time to do that. Whose report are you going to believe? Well, if you don't know the word of God, how can you believe the report of the Lord? Because you don't know what the report of the Lord is. So get to know what the word of God says. I just want to stick to this fourth chapter of Luke. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He was there in Nazareth. You know, his hometown, his boyhood home. But, you know, when you read the scriptures, you're going to find that not many miracles happened in Nazareth. So he left, and he actually made Capernaum 
the headquarters. And those of us who've been to Israel, we always go to Capernaum. It's a fishing village, and it's a tourist spot. And they say St. Peter's house is there, and a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. And they uncovered a synagogue there, and they said that synagogue by Peter, St. Peter's house was probably one that Jesus visited many times and read scriptures from. So it's very, very interesting. But Jesus could not do a lot of miracles in Nazareth because there was so un many unbelief, many people with unbelief there, and nothing happened. And for those of you who've been ministering to your family, you might get discouraged because, you know, they're the ones that don't believe you. They're the ones that know you well. And they see all your faults and they want to talk about your faults and say, oh, if he's a Christian, you know, I don't have to worry about going to heaven. If he's going to go to heaven, he's this way and that way and they pick on our faults. Let me tell you what, if they're picking on your faults, they're the first ones to go to hell because there's the spirit of pride there, you know? And so it may not be the easiest thing for you to bring people from your family. But if you pray, God can use somebody else. The reason why I like to hang around where the tourists hang around, because one time I was in a beauty shop in California, and when the lady was working on me, said, where are you from? Asked me where I was from, and I said, Maui. She goes, oh, and she turned around and she looked into my face. She says, my sister-in-law ran away. She's got three little kids. She left my brother. And she ran away, and we think she's on Maui. And she gave me her name, and she says, if you happen to hear her name, you know? And I said, well, I'll pray. I never found her. I never got contact with her. But I know that there's so many people who are running away from their problems and somebody who loves the Lord a thousand miles, or for us, the mainland is about 2,500 miles away. They're praying for their loved one here. Or maybe you're here and you're praying for your loved one there to get saved. And if you pray hard, you may not personally lead them to Christ, but God can send somebody they will listen to. God knows how. He's a great orchestrator. Don't try to manipulate him. Leave it to him. But looking at this fourth chapter then, so don't be discouraged if Jesus, even Jesus could not perform miracles in his own village, you know? Just move on like he did. He went to Capernaum. But in this, as we move along the chapter, in verse 31, I want to read a portion from the 31st um, first to the 36th. And he had moved down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. Galilee was the, you know, see the lake. And that the region was called Galilee around that lake. And was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching for his word was with authority. Do you know why we preach in Jesus' name? Do you know why we pray in Jesus' name? Because Jesus says, that is my authority I allow you to use. So when we pray in Jesus' name, when you close your prayer by saying, in Jesus' name I pray, there is an authority that has been transferred from Jesus who conquered Satan on the cross when he said, it is is finished as he was dying. He broke Satan's authority and he legally bought and purchased by his blood the authority that had been given over to Satan in this world. And now he says, in my name, with my blood, I give you that authority to use it to be more than conquerors in this world. That's why he can promise us abundant life. <coughs> He promises us eternal life through his name. So we have to pray in his name. So here in the 31st verse, it says, Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. I don't know why they said unclean demons. I thought all demons were unclean. I don't know, but it says unclean demon. 
And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone! The demon was calling out, Let us alone! What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Do you know demons know who Jesus is? The Bible says in another place, the devil knows and he trembles. You know, people better know who the demons are and the, the devil is. And we need to know who Jesus is. The demons know who Jesus is. Aren't we glad we know who Jesus is? And they said, let us. Although it was one man and there was a spirit, that spirit spoke as a group. Let us alone. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. I have been in services where we had to deal with casting out evil spirits. And we've had some great preachers who had this powerful ministry, but I've had to do it myself when I was, in, you know, preaching or whatever. But uh, I learned this. When you're casting out demons, you tell them to be quiet. Sometimes we yell and try to get them out. Jesus just spoke to them and said, be quiet and come out of him. He addressed the demons. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. The demons obeyed Jesus. Demons will obey Jesus. If you ever confront one, or if there's a person, we got so many now on drugs and stuff that is part of the demonic activity on this earth. That's why they're not in their right mind. That's why a lot of them do a lot of harm when they take drugs and so forth. There's a relationship with that word associated with demonic spirits. We just can quietly speak in Jesus' name, come out. In Jesus' name. Be quiet and come out. A lot of times, they will shake, they will tremble, they may scream, they may writhe, and they have a lot of power. I remember once when, in the old church, after service, a lady came, and I had suspected some things about her, the, the sexual kind of stuff, although she was married, and she seemed to be really flirty and and I was observing her, you know, for a while. Then one after service, she had come to the altar call, actually, and she uh, lingered, and so I ministered to her, and I said, what can I do for you? So she stood up, because I was standing up, and all of a sudden, she grabbed me like this and just started rubbing my body against hers. I knew it was a demonic spirit. It was so very strong. And nobody else was around. People had left and were talking out somewhere else. And I said, in the name of Jesus, go. Satan, go. Demons, go. Get out of her. And she collapsed and she shook. And I pleaded the blood of Jesus. And she was set free. And so we have authority. We don't have to be afraid of demons. Look at Jesus' example. He was just starting his ministry. He was starting Capernaum. And then they were all amazed of people around and spake among themselves saying, what a word this is. For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they came out. Do you know we can preach, we can teach, we can sing, we can shout, we can share. But if it's not with the authority of the Holy Spirit, it has no anointing and power. We can do it with kindness. But there needs to be authority in our voice. I told you at the time when I was in New Zealand, and we didn't know it. It was after vacation Bible school, and Bernie, the girl that was with me, uh, we were going in the house, and there's a man came with a big German shepherd dog and entered, and I didn't know him, but he said, can I come in, and I need some counseling and prayer, so we let him in. We had a large living room, and that's where uh, the pastors used to do their counseling and prayer because the bedroom area is uh, closed off, and, um, you know, it's kind of separate. 
And all of a sudden, I stood up, and I didn't really pre-think this. I just stood up, opened the front door, and I said, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave right now. While he was still talking. And he stood up, his eyes were this big, Bernie's eyes were this big, and I opened the door, and he just walked out. And I realize now that when we're under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, this is why we need the Holy Spirit. Because even if we are not trying to evaluate what's going on, if you've got the Spirit of God in you, the Holy Spirit will know what is unholy. And he will work on your behalf. If you're walking in the Spirit, he will, walk, he will work on your behalf. And I was amazed that with that authority, you know, he could have overwhelmed us. He was a bigger kind of guy. But he just kind of got scared. His eyes were big, and he backed out, and he left immediately. Why? Because it was the authority of the anointing of God. You don't have to be mean. Because God is love. But we can speak with authority that the demons will tremble. And so we don't have to worry about this demon or that demon or this bad man or that bad woman or whatever because when we have the power of the Holy Spirit, we can command unclean spirits with authority and they will come out. And in this day and age, it would not be surprising that every one of you who's born again will have that opportunity to cast out a demon from somebody. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to be afraid with the authority that Jesus has given to you. So Jesus shows us who is in power. It is not the devil. When Jesus appeared, although he had not yet gone on the cross, he had the authority to put the devil under his feet. And the devil could not operate. They were subject to him. Why? Not because he was a human being, a God come in human flesh, but because they knew that Jesus was God Almighty. And so they fled. In this passage also, in the fourth chapter, go down to the 38th verse. Just a few verses down. Because he had power over these great things, but I want you to know, some of you say, well, I, have to, I don't have real big sicknesses or demons. or I'm just kind of needing a touch from the Lord. You know, sometimes we think that, oh, God heals cancer. He, you know, does these great miracles. But let me tell you that Jesus is concerned about everything that's not right with you. I don't care how big or small the need. Let's, let's read this. It says, now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. This is why when you go to Capernaum today, they have uncovered, they think, Simon Peter's house and close by a synagogue. So they think that that's the synagogue that Jesus was talking at in this particular situation. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with high fever. And they made request of him concerning her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. She's a typical mother, waiting on the guests and so forth. But a fever, you would think, Oh, that's not major. It's not cancer. It's not a tumor. It's not an asthmatic attack. Like, you know, it's not major. It's just a fever. It will soon go away. But I like reading stories like this, accounts like this, because it reminds me we have a great, big, wonderful God, but he's concerned about your headache. He's concerned about your toothache. He's concerned about your simple problems. He doesn't measure them. He doesn't weigh them. He doesn't evaluate them. If it's hurting you, just give it to Jesus. Don't think that he is too busy or too important that he could not stop by and heal your fever. Take authority. Don't let small things just linger. 
immediately when the enemy comes to attack you, just say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that. I do that all the time. Oh, sometimes I get up and, oh, I feel my feet are hurting or something, especially when I was doing the book and I had to sit down a long time. I was not used to sitting down so long, long stretches. I wish I had taken more breaks. But I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this pain or this tiredness or this, I don't know what it was, but it was trying to keep me from being agile. Anyway, not that I was always agile, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be a big problem. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, there are people with small problems, and they think, oh, I'll just live with it. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to bother Jesus. Oh, but we learn that he's concerned about even our little problems. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you. You care about every bit of us. And tonight we've got some prayer requests. We pray for Pam and Mike, two of our singers who are not feeling well tonight. I send the word of healing in faith, believing. You said in the Psalms, he sent the word to heal them. I send your word of healing to Pam and Mike. I send it to Ross, who's had a blood clot. Touch him. Let faith arise when we call their name. Let faith arise in them to receive that healing. We pray, Lord, for Dr. Pike and Leland Crandall. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Delisi and Davina in the Philippines. And others, Lord, have called us to pray. Many of them are being healed right now. And there's some, Lord, where they are, they're in pain. There's somebody who's having a lot of pain in your jaw and you're having a hard time opening your mouth and swallowing. Be healed in Jesus' name. We give you thanks, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. You're our wonderful Jesus. We send your word. Somebody with flashing headaches. It just flashes and then goes and comes again and goes. Stop it in Jesus' name. Satan, take your hands off of God's children. Take your hands off. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I worship the Lord. Oh, If you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can lay hands on the sick and let the Holy Spirit flow through you wherever you are. Oh, use us to touch those that need healing, Lord. I rebuke the spirit of death that's hovering over some households. In Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of suicide. In Jesus' name. I pray for peace. Oh, I pray for peace. For everyone that's listening tonight, I pray they will take authority. If they know a loved one, a friend who's suicidal, let them rise up in faith and bind that spirit in Jesus' name and plead the blood of Jesus that was shed to conquer Satan. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let life flow, Lord. Let life flow from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Let life flow, Rama Sikaya Ramo Siria Mushai. Uranaya Radaya Ramo Siria and Destinaya Ladaya Ramasai. Urendiriamo Sikiandaraya Labosi 
Let the glory of the Lord descend upon us. Let the glory of the Lord descend upon us. We yield to you, Lord. We yield to you, Oh, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Somebody with a neck pain, just put your hand where the pain is and rebuke it in Jesus' name. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord, I pray. Touch, Jesus. Touch them. Oh, through your mighty power, in the precious name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus. Yes, there's power. Let's sing that there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. For by Him and through Him and in Him are all things.
show your majesty and glory let your anointing fall as we declare your name lord jesus as the only name who saves may the power of your salvation fill each heart we pray as we worship you let all the nations hear us song the song of jesus and his blood that proved his love for all as we worship you may all the lost and broken come may they hear your still small voice call out their names each one as we bow in adoration and stand in reverent awe show your majesty and glory let your anointing fall as we declare your name lord jesus as the only one who saves may the power of your salvation hear each heart we pray of their loved ones. We're having a funeral here on Friday morning. I want you to pray for the family related to Carol. And I've got a dear daughter who cannot be here for the funeral for her mother because of the pandemic and other things. But I want you to know, sweet one, Jesus is with you. We have not forgotten you. He knows your name. And we've called out your name today because we love you. Oh, we wish we could be there with you. Oh, how we wish we could be there with you. But we know you've got a better friend in Jesus. As you go to sleep tonight, let Jesus hold you close. Let Jesus not only heal your grieving heart, but your broken life. Let him renew your mind and your strength. Let the joy of the Lord give you his peace 
May you be a blessing even in this time of great pain. May you reach out to bless someone in Jesus' name. Just want you to know we have not forgotten you. We're there with you in thought. But more than anything, Jesus is there too. And as we close tonight, will you just take your own request or somebody's close by and just lift them up to Jesus? Oh, sometimes it's so hard to pick up ourselves when we're going through something. We need somebody to help us carry our burdens to Jesus. Will you be that friend? You know somebody hurting they may not be near you now, but just lift their name up and say, Jesus, please remember my friend. He needs you. She needs you. I've got a son that needs me, but needs Jesus even more. It's hard to be separated during the tough times. But you know, Jesus has never left you, and I remember you. Oh, yes, and Jesus remembers you. Amen, amen, amen. I want to read one more scripture from that fourth chapter to encourage all of us. It says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And then, as I said, in our discipleship class, he says, go and do likewise. Go and preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Set the captives free. Yes, he has given his authority for you and for me to do it. We don't have to be a big-name preacher. We just need to be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. You do your feeble part, God will do the rest because it is God who promised and God who will do the miracle. So, Father, I pray for our precious ones there. Some of them may be timid. Some of them may be new and they don't know how to do it, but there can't be a wrong way to proclaim you and to obey you. So very simple. Do the miracles, Lord. And we pray that all of us, Lord, I feel like you're coming so very soon. Keep us in the center of your will where there's peace and strength and prosperity and power and protection. Keep us all safe until we meet you in the air or meet again through Facebook and otherwise. Bless your people. There's somebody that has had a heart problem bothering you and in the name of Jesus, I pray healing right now. Just put your hand on your heart and God's going to correct the problem, whatever it is, right now, in Jesus' name. Yes. But you know, it's not only Wednesday that's healing night. It's every day. Every day. He's available every day. And so go heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, and preach the good news to those who don't know it. We're going to close now by singing Alive Forevermore. We're alive. One of the benefits of knowing Jesus is we're alive forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive. Oh wait, hang on there, hang on there, everybody hang on, we're going to sing it again. But I see Mama Teresa, St. Teresa around, and I want her to make an appearance because I think she promised to come 
and in two weeks, and she's going to present her talent. So if she can come here and uh, just hang on there. You don't want to miss this exciting advertisement for our talent show. And uh, if, if anybody saw Mother Teresa? Is she sleeping outside on the, on the sidewalk? Uh, did somebody find her there? I thought we were going to bring her in. So, and, you know, we're going to introduce her, and then we're going to sing that song one more time, and then we're going to close. Okay, so keep singing until we're ready to close. But somebody's dragging in Mother Teresa, I believe. Uh, yes, uh, where is Mother? We're so blessed to have this happy surprise. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hello, Mother Teresa. Hi. Hi. Well, that was a long flight from Calcutta. Was it Calcutta? Say hello and invite them to our talent show. You're going to be there, aren't you, Mother? Yes. What are you going to do? I will follow him, <laughs> follow him wherever he may go. Ooh, we're going to have fun with Mother Teresa. We have a talent show next Friday at 6, yeah, 6, 6, 6 p.m. And not next Friday, not this Friday. She's, she's a partner in this, and Naomi and Sister Gloria. If they can draft us. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun, and James is going to be our choir director. Oh, okay, okay. So don't miss it. Now, this Friday, we don't have any rehearsals. Uh, we don't have any Facebook. We're having rehearsals for our talent show, which is the following Friday, okay, at 6 o'clock. No, we better make it 7, because it's our Facebook time. Sorry. It's going to be at 7 o'clock because it's a regular Facebook time. Okay, so let's have Okay, all right, so be ready. And I hope Mother Teresa doesn't go back to Calcutta <laughs> because she might not be able to find her way back. But pray for her. And let's sing this song as we close. Amen. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore My Jesus is alive Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah My Jesus is alive forevermore Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah My Jesus is alive Amen, and you stay alive until we have our talent show but God bless you. Have a good weekend. We see you on Sunday, worshiping the Lord. On Sunday is going to be our national day of prayer and fasting. Remember that and pray for our nation from now. But have a good night. God bless you. Love you so much. Aloha.